thanks for letting me into your house, Richard and Lizzie. Tell me a bit about it. How long have you been here? Ten years. I think we've been here ten years. 2002. It's, it's a nice home. We love it here. We met a girl in the pub one night. Yeah. And she said, oh, I live in the village. And I said, where do you live? She said, the house with the eagles outside. I said, if it ever comes for sale, let me know, won't you? Because he's always loved it. Yeah, and she said, uh, it is on for sale, but mum and dad didn't want the for sale sign outside. So I bought it the next day. And what do you like to do when you're here? So you've got a swimming pool and a tennis court. Which yeah. don't get used. That's the closest thing I do on the tennis floor, <laughs> is playing golf on it. So, Richard, it's pretty much golf, golf, golf outside of racing? More or less, yeah. Yes. He has actually more shoes, I think, than me, and occasionally he'll he'll just sneak a pair in. And so, golf shoes, right? Yeah, golf <laughs> shoes. Yeah, I mean golf shoes. And he'll he'll walk in and he'll and he'll say to me, I've had those ages and I, I know that trick, so yeah. I know what How he's... many golf shoes do you have then? About six. Oh, but he, no, he, yeah, exactly. that's no. It you have more true. than that. He's about six in the back of his car and his boot where everything lives. Yeah. Um then he has some in there. Oh, in every wardrobe he has some. Lizzie has a room full of shoes. <laughs> Very small room. And how good are you? I'm off seven now, so not too bad. You can tell us truthfully how helpful is Richard around the house. Not the best, <laughs> but he kind of leads me to it in a way, which is nice, you know, but with the kids putting to bed and stuff, he does help sometimes, but I have to ask him. She doesn't interfere with my job, so I think no. it's best not to interfere. <laughs> and I would ours. rather it that way. I know, I know I'd, I'd take the mickey, but I would rather it that way. But you come from a, a race team, and your father, Richard Hannan, obviously Richard rides for, therefore you must be fairly involved. Do you know what horses he's riding each day? How much do you yeah. look at the, the racing post? I do. I re, I re, I, during the winter, I probably wouldn't read it so much, but if I have to have it first thing in the morning before he gets his hands on it, um, just to flick through it. Um, but, yeah, I get... I, quite involved go racing about yeah, she knows her horses pretty well but... I'll know if he's given one a bad ride and I'll tell him and you will you'll, he'll come yeah. back home and not just get it from the trainer you'll get it from the trainer's yeah. daughter as yeah. well exactly second hand well no because I've got it from the trainer you see to say so give he... him a hard time when you get no home. well he just says it so that I it, it logs with me and then I come home and I um, I kind of say it how it is how easy is it to switch off from racing altogether and just um, you know and forget about it I, I, don't, don't, think I do. don't think you ever do. I wouldn't want to either, really. It's, we no, got... it's our life and racing's part of it. My job comes first and the family comes second. And Really? Yeah. <laughs> they know that. But... And Lizzie, you're happy with that? Yeah. Yeah, I know he... No, I ha it's a job I have yeah. to do. And it's a job that it's most days in the summer. And yeah. I do have the winter with the kids, so there's plenty of time to catch up. I've got a hat hire business. This is my third year. So that's keeping me busy, um, but I just I just started it with about fifty hats, and then it just has grown, and now uh, people don't really want to, to spend too much money on a hat. So if they can hire one, um, then it makes more sense for them, I think. And the season's just about getting into full flow right now. How different is it for you going in as champion jockey? What kind of pressure is that? Well, there's no pressure in defending. If, if it happens, it happens. Um, I'm glad I'd done it once. The first one was definitely the hardest. Um, now I know how to do it. It makes my strategy a bit easier. I know where to be at certain times of the year. But a good start this year, probably 25 winners more than I had last year. Um, and I'd like to be on the 100 mark on Goodwood. Last year I wasn't, but I had a really good September then. So um, I, I like to think I'll have 100 winners by Goodwood this year. The only one I have to worry about is Ryan Moore. <laughs> so as long as I can hang on to his tail for as long as I can. It's awful though, we're, we're kind of logging it already, right from the start, there's yeah. so much... Subconsciously, you're yeah. saying, you don't want him to get it too far ahead of you. Because Ryan does ride an awful lot of winners. And as long as I can stick on his tail, I don't mind doing the Wolverhampton, so as Ryan might have a different opinion on it. How exhausting is it, or will it be, if it comes down to, you know, really busting your gut? Those Pe people say it's exhausting, it's not as... As long as you're riding winners, like if you're doing riding the many horses as it was and not riding winners, oh, it'd be painful. But for anyone that goes out and having two or three winners a day, I know how lucky I am, you know. The classic is the yeah. most important thing. The winners and the ch jockey thing comes You've after done it. it. Well, my ambition in life was to win the Epsom Derby. Rather um, than be champion. Yeah, and I've only ridden it a couple of <laughs> six or seven times. So. It's the best chance But we've yeah, never had, had runners in it, Richard. Yeah. I think his last runner in the Derby was Assessor, and I think that was 20 years ago.